scene. Uh, time now to do a little rearranging here as we set up our first panel of the afternoon where we'll be discussing the relationship between brands and athletes and how those dynamics need to improve. We've got an all-star lineup who will be joining the stage momentarily. We're gonna kick things off with giant superstar running back Saquon Barkley, three-time Super Bowl champ Julian Edelman, the VP of Sports Entertainment and Gaming, Gatorade and PepsiCo, Kalen Thornton, LA Lakers great, NBA Hall of Famer and sports broadcaster, big game James Worthy, and our moderator is 13-year NFL vet, star wide receiver, and founder of the I Am Athlete brand, Brandon Marshall. We're gonna take a look at a video from Brandon as we uh, welcome everybody up to the stage. I am athlete, one of the pioneers of new media, uh, the voice of today's athlete. What started as an experiment during the pandemic has exploded into the fastest growing athlete-led media network in less than three years, racking up more than half a billion views across social media platforms like YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. We're leading a national conversation with game-changing interviews featuring cultural icons like Colin Kaepernick, Little Wayne, Antonio Brown, Kyrie Irving, Deion Sanders, and so many more. Not to mention a constant stream of superstar athletes and celebrities from Cam Newton and Shaq to Fat Joe, Jake Paul, J.R. Smith, Kerry Champion, Tank Davis, and D. Wade. The I Am Athlete squad is strong. We're over 3 million engaged followers constantly commenting and sharing our content like LeBron James and Russell Wilson, as well as your favorite sports leagues and teams collaborating and joining in on the conversation, like the Bengals, the Broncos, the Rams, the Chargers, even the UFC is all locked in. We have some of the biggest conversations and the biggest moments in sports and culture with some of the top athletes, musicians, artists, and public figures in different spaces. I Am Athlete exists to create a safe place, a locker room, a sounding board to have real conversations. Some platforms was created to create content for the fans. I Am Athlete create content for the athlete and then the fan follows. We live in this world now where we're throwing around this term and of new media and we're trying to figure out how to work with influencers around the world and athletes around the world to tell the stories that the fan want to hear. Truly believe with the right partners, we can lead the way and disrupt what everyone is calling new media. How we doing? Okay. Good. So we have Mr. Saquon Barkley here. Um, one of the biggest athletes, obviously, got his guns out. Literally. In the biggest markets. We have Julian Edelman, who uh, is my man crush. He's been my man crush since 2011 when he was returning punts and playing defense for Bill Belichick. Mr. Kalen Thornton, he hasn't forgotten about the fraternity. He's on the other side now. Uh, another athlete that's transitioned beautifully uh, and someone who's created a blueprint for us as athletes to follow. And then Mr. James Worthy, a living legend. So I'm gonna start here, right, to set the, set the tempo. Um, this talk is how brands should partner with athletes. Kaylin, uh, as the chief marketing officer, I wanna start with you. Uh, you're a guy that transitioned to the other side. You're a low profile guy, and I don't wanna take too much time speaking about the difference between brand an athlete focused on the brand and business. What have you seen work uh, from an athlete going from, you know, uh, just focusing on the sport to now building business? Now, it's a great question. And, and well, first, I am honored and privileged to be on the stage with such incredible athletes. As you mentioned, um, I, I had the opportunity to play, but it was much more low profile. And I would say the biggest thing that carried through um, to that transition from sport to business is, is the preparation, the attention to detail. Before this, B. Marsh is in there studying his notes copiously, like the same way he probably would before game day. So I think you've got to bring, the, bring that over. The other thing I'd say is like when we talk about the relationship between brands and athletes, 
Athletes are brands, they're individual brands, and so you have to get into a relationship, an environment where it's mutually beneficial, where you're both passionate about the particular cause, the purpose, the story that you're trying to tell. Uh, and then third, it's gotta be authentic. You gotta be authentic to yourself as an individual, it's gotta be authentic to the brand um, and the stories that you're trying to bring to consumers and fans and athletes alike, just like your video said, tee it up. I love that. Um, and guys, feel free to jump in if you want to expound on anything you know our guys are, are saying. Uh, Saquon, one of the biggest athletes in the biggest markets. That means the biggest deals, the best deals. What would you say, what advice would you give to the younger Saquon Barkley on how to approach his brand? Yeah, I think that's a great question. Um, the biggest thing I would say is continue to do stuff that's authentic and real to you. I feel like you get caught up in the numbers, you get caught up in the brand, um, and you get lost in it. You start doing stuff that doesn't you know, necessarily resonate with you and who you are as a person and who you are as, as a core. And it took me a little bit, beginning of my career, to, to really figure that out and uh, kind of picking, picking it off of, piggybacking off what Jalen said. Um, doing stuff that's authentic, doing stuff that's real, giving back to the community. Like, those are the stuff that you're about. Those are stuff that you want to do when you're in college, and there's a reason why you got here. And now that you have the opportunity, you have a voice, you have a brand, and you're able to partner with these people and these businesses, use that. And that would be the advice I'll give to myself. And uh, any college athlete that's coming up or any rookie that's coming up right now is be real to yourself and uh, don't let uh, the, the, new, the new world and the numbers kind of take you away from doing things what you really love. Right. So obviously Saquon Barkley, living legend, playing the biggest market in sports, New York. Um, and we have some of the biggest brands here, and I understand that you guys have done a phenomenal job of building some amazing teams and some amazing products. But I do think it's important to hear and learn from athletes that's doing it at a high level. So really quickly, Saquon, uh, now that you gave advice to the younger Saquon, what advice can you give to some of the biggest brands here that are trying to figure out this new media space and this social media landscape on the do's and, and the not? I would say it's partnership. Um, do's and don'ts, excuse me. Yeah, yeah. I would there say it's a partnership. Uh, you get so caught up in when you start working with these brands and these companies that uh, they hire these people and you got to come in there and kind of going back off to the conversation of what's real and authentic. Uh, allow us to have conversation. I feel like that's what... From my uh, situation, I feel like that's what uh, resonates best to the fans and best to the consumers is having those, having sitting down, having those conversations, and uh, we come together as a partnership. And obviously, you have your, your core values, I have my values, and we use that together and bring it together, and then feed that to the consumers and feed that to the fans out there. And I've seen from you know the data and statistics, whether it's from my Twitter or from my IG. Uh, the, the interactions and the way that fans respond, uh, it, it goes better with, with situations like that or with ideas like that of more of a partnership and not just like, okay, show up and do this and, and say this. Right. Uh, there's so much, thank you, Quan. There's so much I can talk about this guy. City's my man crush from 2011, uh, Julian Edelman. I got the Patriots tattoo right on me right here. Seriously, I got it tattooed on me because I lost a bet against him uh, this year, Jets versus the Pats. Um, when I think about new media, the, the way I describe it is athletes want to sit down with athletes, artists want to sit down with artists. I can easily talk about this guy at new media. If you're a brand out here and you're really trying to figure out how to work with athletes in this new media landscape, please connect with him. But what I will say is this, right? I, I, the thing that makes him genius is that he carved out certain categories and he was able to monetize his moments. There's a, a couple athletes out there did at a high level. Marshawn Lynch, Beast Mode, Richard Sherman, Des Bryant, and then there's Julian Edelman. His team, the way they approach their moments and the way I describe moments is he scores four touchdowns. They go to the Super Bowl. He breaks a record. Tom Brady breaks a record. How the hell do, do you jump on that wave, right? So Julian... Can you talk about uh, monetization of moments and then also, you know, speak to the brands on how they can potentially participate in those moments? Are there opportunities for brands in those moments? Yeah. Brandon, thank you. You're, you're my crush too, dude. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so crushy on you. No, thank you. Um, yeah, so I have a great team around me, and, and when we sit in the, the war room, we call it, you know, it starts off with the internet. We serve the internet. You know, that's what we all do with our new generation type media. And 
through my younger times, I was the first guy in the locker room on Instagram. I was the first guy, like I remember walking down, I was the rookie in 2009, and this was before everyone was on their phone in their locker. It used to be guys were talking and, and doing things, and now it's changed. But I was the first one on there, so I, I was able to build a platform through social, and that gave me a community. You know what I mean? I was building towards a community of what I was a fan of. I would go out on every Tuesday and we'd do content and I would sit with my partner Asaf and he'd be like, what are you interested in? And I'd be like, uh, I, you know, I watch the Food Network all the time. And, and you know, he's like, well, let, let's make a, a video of you cooking something. And, I, and uh, he goes, what do you cook? And I go, well, you know, I don't know. I make smoothies every day. And so then we did this spoof video called Smoothie Time. And people in New England loved it, and it was a little jokey video. And, and what we did after that, we built that whole little brand up. And then the next Smoothie Time, we were able to incorporate Ninja Blenders, you know? So product placing with, with the brand. And, uh, you know, so it, it starts off with the internet, building your community as a player, and then the athlete is the vehicle for the brand to join in the community that they're trying to serve. That's awesome, appreciate that. Um, Mr. James Worthy, living legend, we love you. Um, been doing this for a very long time on both sides. Another athlete that's paved the way for guys like myself, Saquon and Julian Edelman. Um, how do brands partner with living legends? Uh, that's a that's a good question. I've never been asked that one before. I think um, I think the partnership has to be uh, mutual, mm -hmm. and I think um, as far as the athlete is concerned, um, the athlete has to be willing to become almost an employee for a company that wants to work with him, uh, and you have to understand exactly uh, what the brand is and what they're trying to present. And I think also you have to be uh, progressive. You have to put yourself out there. Uh, you have to be on social media. You have to have other interests other than the prof professional sport that you played in. I like what Edelman just said, uh, a smoothie day. You have to be involved in the community and what the community is involved in. It just can't be about your career or about your, you know, your professional life. It has to be about what the people want, what the community want, and particularly what the company wants. So uh, you have to sometimes be progressive and approach companies. So sometimes they're not going to always seek you out. So one of the things I did while I was still playing about my eighth year, we had a program called PACE program where you go out and you meet with companies and you let them know what you'd like to do uh, upon retiring. It starts early. You can't wait. To, I mean, a lot of people have success when they retire, but mine started in the middle, like in the middle of my career when I was doing speaking engagements. Uh, I was also uh, making strong contacts and letting them know what I wanted to do after I played my game. So I, I speak a lot about teamwork, uh, and a lot of times they like that and they bring you on to do a circuit. Um, on how to resolve problems in the workplace, how to create harmony within the workplace, how to solve problems, particularly with people you, you're not compatible with. Right. You know, in sports, we're not always compatible with our teammates, but we understand what they bring to the table yeah. in order to get the big picture, which is a championship, which is to be the number one company. So it's twofold. Uh, sometimes you create a platform yep. and people recognize what you're doing, and, and, and a lot of times you have to seek out who you want to work with and approach them as well. So the question, live, how to partner with living le legends, and as athletes up here, we understand teamwork, we understand perseverance, we understand how to overcome obstacles. So what I, what I just heard was, you know, sometimes it doesn't always have to be forward-facing. Sometimes you can bring in living legends like this to really, which a lot of brands do, to help with the camaraderie, to help with how to stay together. One of the things that I realized in this new uh, corporate space that I'm in, not playing for a couple years, is people in this space don't, we're not always pushing to the same thing. When I'm walking in the locker room, 
I'm pushing towards this championship. We're pushing to winning this game. And in business, it's not always the same. Everybody got their own objectives, which is interesting. Uh, and it takes someone to really, you know, galvanize the team to keep them pushing, moving forward. Uh, KT, Mr. CMO, I, I can talk to him like this because he's still on the side and he's a you know, the fraternity. So we have a lot of brands out here, a lot of big companies. Um, when I think about brands that get it right, some of the biggest ads, some of the biggest campaigns speak to the audience, the sports audience, and also connect with the athletes. I think about Nike and I think about Gatorade. What are you guys doing right that other brands can follow? Because everybody wants to ride this wave. Like, let's partner with athletes. Athletes, you know, social currency, phenomenal, right? They can, they're connecting to the audience. They have some of the biggest platforms. Some, sometimes athletes have more followers than the teams or the leagues, right? We've seen this with Messi over the last two weeks. So what should brands be thinking about, and how should they be uh, approaching partnering with athletes? I, I, th I think the biggest thing that, that Nike, Jordan brand, Gatorade, uh, and even Pepsi now that I serve do well is that they lean into an authentic insight that comes from the relationship, the conversations that each of the athletes and brands have. So the cooking show and through smoothies, that's an authentic insight that you were just being you. And for a brand to be able to see that opportunity and tap into that and tell stories, that is the common goal for all of us that are together, whether you're a legend, whether you're a young athlete, whether you switch, went from the field to the corporate game, we all tell stories. And the best stories are those that tap into human connection. There's that quote from Maya Angelou, people don't remember what you say, they remember how you, how you make them feel. And so when you get into a space where you partner with a brand and you're telling something that's authentic to you, and it's done in a way that creates that emotional connectivity, those are the best relationships. Those are where you get those lasting partnerships that go over decades, like Jordan had with Nike, like many of y'all had with Nike and Gatorade, et cetera. So I think that's the most important thing to get right. Yeah, talking about authenticity, Saquon, in the back, we were talking about a spot that you just did with Nike and you wore your do-rag, right? Uh, why did that make you feel good? Or why, why was that a moment that you remembered? Um, I, I think it was a moment I remember because, it's a, like, you think about it, it's Nike, uh, one of the biggest companies in the world, and I'm able to be out there and do a shoot with a do-rag, and it's kind of going off of what I'm, I cut my hair lower now, like, I'm trying to get waves, like, I'm trying to uh, recreate an image of myself, uh, especially with the point of my, where I'm at in my career, and for a, a company like that, like, we're sitting there, and they're like, you know, What's, what's new with you? What do you like to do? What do you want to do? And I'm telling them, I'm expressing myself, and it's not just me expressing myself. You also go in there, you go to the shoot, and you see it, it actually come into life. And as, a, as an athlete, um, you know, it, it, it just hits you. It just strikes you in a different place because, you know, like, a, as big Nike is, you know, they could do this, they could say this, they could do whatever they want. But at the end of the day, they're listening to you. They're listening to your input, um, and it's coming to life. It's coming to fruition. You work with some of the biggest brands out there. Um, what do you love about the brands and their teams that get it right? Like, is there one or two things that you can share with us, with some of the brands that you love working with? Um, I would say the, the things that get it right, it's kind of changing for me right now uh, because I'm trying to get, I'm trying to trans transfer my career into how, how I can be in a situation or position like yourself or like Julian. Um, so... I, I think I have to be able to come out, and I, it kind of goes off to uh, what, what Mr. Worthy was saying, and uh, being progressive and putting yourself out there and starting to do more stuff like a smoothie time, putting myself out there and trying to expand my brand and not just be uh, the football player, not just be that, because I want to be so much more. And, and with you know, everything that's going on in my life right now, you have contract situations and you see how the NFL is really set up, you realize that it's not here forever. So you have to start transferring that, that mindset um, into after career. So now for me, the brands that's doing it right, for me it's all about like how can I set myself up to be a Julian? How can I set myself up to be a brand? Um, for a perfect example, uh, Michael Strahan, New York. He did in New York and he did it the right way, won championships, and now have a successful career after football. Um, that's what I think the brands that do it right for me. So, for example, like setting myself up with Nike and having a shoe deal and coming out with my own shoe, a lifestyle shoe, um, or doing a shoe and showing, like, my side of it and my creativity to it, too, uh, is just a big blessing. And those are the stuff, I would say, uh, that I really value um, with working with brands. Right. I, I want to say this really quickly, and then I'll go to you, Jules, and then come to you, Mr. But I was going to jump in there. Like, Go ahead. 
This is what he does to be on Inside the NFL the last two years. Go ahead. I was going to jump in there. <laughs> yeah. you know, he, we keep on talking about authenticity and, and what you have to do when you go out to make yourself, you know, build your brand. And we're at such a crazy time right now. I, I did everything through social media. You know, and because of that platform, it allows us that, you know, Saquon, he's going through a contract battle, whatever. We, but you Pay can, the man. Pay the guy. Pay the guy. But you could use. 50% of the offense. He makes up 50% of the <laughs> yeah. offense. But go ahead. And this sorry. is what Brandon always does to me. Um, <laughs> and so you could use the platforms to, you know, kind of. It's kind of like, you know, you, you have little smoke and mirrors over here. You can mm -hmm. dictate the narrative. You can do what you want. And while doing that, you can bring in brands. You can bring in interests. You know, I don't know. I just wanted to get in there and jump in, you know. No, no, that's good. That, that, but my next question to you uh, was going to be this, and it's aligned with what you just said. I, I, I think of you as a disruptor. I think of you like the Pat McAfee's of the world, the Barstools of the world, uh, guys that are paving their own way, doing things differently. So my question to you, Jules, really quickly is like, what's next? When you think about innovation, when you think about how athletes should be thinking, when you think about how brands should be thinking, what's next? What's next? That's a very broad question. <laughs> um, lunch. Lunch, lunch <laughs> is next. That's, that's a marketer right there. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, it, it goes with what the trends are. You know, what, what, what are the people talking about? And, and that's what's so cool about the analytics and everything that you have these days. You can sit and see the behaviors of what people want, and then you could use yourself to jump in the conversation and then throw a brand on the back with you. Yeah. You know, because everything, as we keep on saying, is about authenticity. Yep. So if it's authentic with the, the athlete, in the conversation with the people, then the brand's gonna get their the worth out of it. I, I think the athlete is a lot more sophisticated than they've ever been. Um, way more educated. Uh, I came, uh, graduated high school in 79, and so I remember sports in the 70s, 80s, and it was mostly about the brand. And I think the future now is holding, you're gonna see athletes in more ownership positions, yeah. uh, hiring positions. Uh, you'll see athletes that will be putting on uh, events like this. And we've never been in the back seat, but we've always been hired. And I think it's, it's, it's changed, it's evolved into where we are our own bosses now. And we work with companies like, you know, Stagwell and other companies. But I think I see a, a newer, more sophisticated, ownership athlete uh, coming up in, in the future. Yeah. All right, we have 30 seconds, and we're already over 40 seconds, and they're going to kick me off. Ryan, don't invite me back. I'm sorry. I'm a minute over. Two-minute drill. Two-minute drill. Two-minute drill. Okay? Two-minute drill. You know two what a two-minute drill. drill is, Mr. Basketball Guy? I've seen All right, it. really quickly. You got 30 seconds. Um, I feel like there's an opportunity for brands to partner with athletes transitioning to media. What's the opportunity there? I think, the if there is. I think the opportunity in media is great because we have a, a, a big audience watching us. Uh, we have connected with a lot of people on Instagram or social media. So I think we are perfect, um, you know, people to spread the message. We already have content and uh, a face on television. So I, I think we're, we're great as far as expanding uh, a brand or product. Okay. All right, really quickly, Jules, give me your uh, favorite uh, Bill Belichick uh, story person. Like you want to impersonate him or Tom Brady? Anything, real quick. My favorite. Brandon, once again, throws me on the spot. Let's go. Um, yeah, you know, this whole thing, Bill would, he would be here like if we were talking about marketing or anything, he, he'd be like, we don't need to fucking talk about this. Like, what are we talking about, Brandon? Like, everything's in production. Let's go. <laughs> K KT, uh, Jerry Jones, favorite moment with Jerry Jones? I mean, when he gave me my contract. I mean, that, was, <laughs> <There you> like, <laughs> <laughs> that was my favorite moment. Uh, I, I will say, I'm not going to answer that question, but I will say one quick thing. For the audience, for everyone out here, 
um, what you are witnessing are dynamic athletes that are more than athletes. Mm. So the question that you just spoke, these are human beings doing amazing things creatively. They're doing amazing things off the field. They're doing amazing things to push their families and communities forward. Tell those stories. Then this new paradigm where you have more than ever competition, because everybody has a phone now, and everybody's on social media. The creative economy is real, but you have this opportunity to tap into sport and athletes and change the game. So I just wanted to share that. Like This is more than just athletes up here. These are people that can help your businesses and brands. There you go. Saquon, they're, they're telling we got to get off. Uh, <laughs> prediction, uh, how many yards are you going to go for this year, and then we'll, we'll get off the stage? How many it takes to help us win the Super Bowl? Ah. Oh. Amen. Well Thank said. you. Guys. Yeah. Thank you so much, Saquon.